we have a lot of WWE cuts to talk about, so we might as well start there. That was the talk of all of uh, the websites today. Yeah. Um, I haven't finished my story on it, but the one thing that I noticed, and there's a couple of exceptions, is that, I mean, most of the guys, it's it's like they're gutting, they gutted the 205 Live guys that have been around for a long time. The guys that they got rid of are guys that they weren't going to, you know, they weren't going to do anything with the guys, and they were mostly older guys. And I know that there's a movement to bring in younger and bigger guys. You know, that's like the big thing right now there. Um, un, 26 and under, over 220, you know, that type of that type of mentality again. You know, whenever business is bad, you know, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, uh, popularity. I'll say popularity is, is um, so-so at this point. Um, you can't say business is bad. I mean, in, in traditional metrics, it, it, it's not great. But um, whenever that happens, you know, Vince is always going to go back to, you know, his intuition, which is always we need bigger guys. And um, and and the younger guys is probably something that they really do need um, is to focus on, because, I mean, one of the big problems is no young guys. I mean, somebody sent me something today and mentioned the David Von Erich Harley race angle in St. Louis. And it was just like, I mean, that, that I remember that very well because, um, that opened up the, um, St. Louis, the crowds got young, really, really young. Like they had their old brawlers, the Dick Murdoch's and the bruiser and Harley race and those guys. And, and they were doing fine, but they weren't doing great. And then it was the Von Erichs, a young Ted DiBiase, um, a fairly young Ric Flair, and Bruce Brody. And they just turned that thing around. And they just did great business for a couple of years there. And um, with a lot of girl fans. And But the David Von Erich Harley race match uh, was the turnaround. They took 21-year-old David Von Erich, who was skinny, who people said couldn't get over. Uh, because he was so thin they did a match where they brought fritz back and it was a handicap match harley race challenged both of them at the same time one you know one at a time not two on one so david would go first so everybody figured you know harley's going to beat david and then fritz is going to come in and and uh you know have a big brawl with harley and harley and fritz are going to go at it and then david bloodied up race beat him with a claw fritz never even got in the match uh you know beat him right away I and mean, right away but beat him and that's what turned the business around was you know the the idea david became a big star and a big draw immediately for beating the world champion and you know by today's standards they would never in a million years do that because they don't do it with 21 year old guys and they don't do it with skinny guys even you know and um they just want to do it with people who haven't paid their dues or whatever. But that's, you know, when you look back at when uh, companies started turning it around, it's almost always with really young, young guys. And that's like the big WB flaws that by the time they bring you up, you're 35 years old. I mean, even like Riddle, who th people think is a young guy is like around 35 years old. So um, they don't have, they don't use young guys. They don't have young guys. So I do think that recruiting young is a, is a really good idea. Um, but I mean, as far as like, you know, I feel bad for everyone. Um, and for, for a lot of the, for some, there will be some people who get cut and I don't know who they are, who it's probably the best thing because they probably were in WWE with this idea that, uh, well, I'm going to wait for my break or whatever. And I'm in the big show and all that. And, and it was never going to come for all these guys. It was never going to come because it was going to come. They were going to, you know, and, um, but for a lot of them, it's going to be really tough. I mean, you know, yeah, I think, um, you know, several of the guys could go to Impact. You know, I think the Bollywood boys could probably go there, and and a lot of the some of the, several several of the others. But it's not it's it's a it's not the same kind of money. And um, I don't know who from this list. If I'm AEW, I would take. I mean, there's a, there's certainly a few that I would consider giving tryouts to. You know, but I mean, as far as like jumping on them, um, you know, there's. I mean, Tony Nese is a very very good worker. Um, you know, I mean, you know, uh, Breeze is good, but I don't know what to do with him. I mean, he's so, so marginalized, um, you know, with Fandango. That team was just, you know, they, they had their peak and it's it's all comedy and everything. And they're thought of as comedy guys. And I don't know that 
like with AEW that you need more. the last thing I think that they need right now is more comedy guys. I think they're already they're veering too much in the comedy direction anyway. Um, so, but I do think that there's probably a place for some of those guys. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to think what else. You know, what I mean, well, uh, so you you mentioned that they most of the the talent fit a certain description nxt or smaller except for killian dane he he's he's a big he guy. was kind of the the one that was the outlier there for me yeah um i think that they would you know but that's not vince's type of guy and he'd been through it and i think that they you know just obviously they just didn't think that you know they've got 300 pound guys and I think that they just didn't feel that that he was the one that they were going to push. He's agile. He's a guy like, like uh, I could. I mean, like if I was Impact or Ring of Honor, I would take him for sure. Um, AEW, I would definitely give him a try. I don't know that I would jump on him, but I would give him a try. And Nice is another one where it's like Nice is such a good wrestler, but he just. I. I mean. He's got to come up with a personality. I mean, when I think of him, I think of like, I would watch him in, in um, Evolve, and I thought the guy was great. And I, when I watched him in 205 Live as a wrestler, I thought he was great, but he just did never showed personality. You know, walking out there and, you know, pointing to your abs, it's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it anywhere. You got to have more than that. So if he can show personality, I mean, he, you know, he could be good, but it's like, I, you know, um, I mean, you know, if you need like, look, if you need a good wrestler, he's a good wrestler, a very good wrestler. So, um, you know, and then um, I'm trying to yeah, think might as well just go through the through all of them. So, uh, mentioned Fandango, mentioned Tyler Breeze, Tyler. mentioned Tony. Yeah, they were the, they were the biggest names in the the things. You know, were the other biggest names to me. Uh, Daivari. Daivari. Um, you know, I mean, Daivari's good too. I mean, it just he was never a guy that they were ever going to do anything with. But he can talk and he's um, and he can wrestle. Um, he can give you a good match. Uh, I don't think he can. He's going to have to show something as far as can he be a star And that um, when he's been in skits, he's fine. I mean, he really is fine. It's just that like a guy of his size was never going to get a big push in WWE, especially once they tanked that 205 Live thing. But um, I mean, he's, com you know, he's a competent guy you know the thing is is there's so many the, the thing with with him is there's so many guys like him this business is filled with you know 100 and whatever it is 180 pound guys that are really quite good and not all of them you know even if they're quite good um it's not like there's a premium there's this place the business is you know people will, won't say this you know people will say it's not true but it's overloaded with good wrestlers right now more than there's really jobs for i mean there's the the openings are really right now i mean you know if you have a spectacular personality but none of these guys really do that were let go or if you're a woman who's a really good athlete and um i think that there's there's definitely more spots for that out there um because you know, Ring of Honor needs more women. Um, AEW could use more women that are good workers for sure. Um, not that they don't have, you know, some good women, some good women because they do. But um, that's really where the opening is. And like the um, was was Mar Marina Shafir was cut, and she's a good athlete. I mean, it's a project, and obviously, you know, I mean her. Yeah, you know, it was interesting. They broke up two couples, Killian Dane and Nikki Cross and Marina and Roderick Strong. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's interesting, too, because everyone's doing this Nick Khan stuff. And I mean, I'm sure I'm sure that it was probably Nick Khan who, for whatever reason, his job is to maximize profits, whether it's to sell the company and to make it look good for a sale or make it look good for the stock market or whatever it is. Right. I mean, that's clearly his job. And they are and they you know, he's the one who is engineering, getting rid of the stockpiling, which, you know, the company did for so long and now they are not doing it. They're getting rid of the people that they don't need um, and and that have they've used up. So they're not necessarily even, um, um, you know, that valuable on the outside. But um you know, like like Marina, I would. She's one that I would like give a try to, 
just because she's a good athlete. And um, I, I mean, I've never been like blown away by her, but I could say the same for Ty Conti. And because and that's actually that's that's the reason, even though like I don't I, I really don't want to compare her to Ty Conti because I think that's they're, they're two completely different people. But they both did come from judo and that may be about the only thing that they have in common. But I, I just think that there may you know, if Ty Conti could go to AEW and, and be a big star and she's going to be if she if you know, I don't know that I'd call her a big star today, but she's right on the verge of being a big star. Then I, I could see giving someone like that a chance. So, um, you, you know, yeah, I um, the one name I, I don't know. I don't know. There's 14 names. And um the one that I that I think WWE didn't announce is Tino Sabatelli, and and mm-hmm. you know he's from a different era. I mean, in I, a sense. I didn't even realize he was back with them. I don't know where. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had done that. He had done a couple of um, AW tryout matches. Was I was not impressed. You know, I mean, he was like one of those guys where I would have done. You know, it's like, oh, hey, you know, it's like he wasn't too bad in in NXT, and he's got a great body. He's a little on the old side, and he's a great athlete, incredible athlete. So it's like, you know, I'd give him a try. But when I saw him in in uh, AEW on the dark, I just wasn't impressed at all. I was just like, okay, you know, I, you know, I mean, it's like, if, you know, <laughs> he wasn't that good. And I mean, it, you know, I think that when you're a certain level in WWE, you look much better than an AEW because AEW, um, it's like the standard is much higher. Um, some people are going to get mad, but I can tell you from talking to people in WWE, wrestle in WWE, um, they are very clear on that. You know, I mean, there's going to be WWE fans and old time fans who are going to get really pissed. I said that, but if you really look at it, they do so much more, which you could say isn't good, but they have so much more exciting matches as a general rule. And someone who can, someone who is like average and has a good look in WWE can go to AEW and just look like they don't belong, that they're too slow. They're doing that WWE style. And he did. He yeah. Well, looked. the other wrestlers may not be doing the WWE style. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't do the WWE style when you're, outside of WWE because it's a it's a slower style that doesn't work outside of WWE and it only works in WWE when there's fans <laughs> or when you know you can get your personality over past a certain level I mean if you're if you do that style and you're a 180 pound guy and um, you're it's not gonna it's not gonna work outside of WWE it really isn't so uh, uh, other talent August Gray yeah I mean he's good um I, you know, I, I, I could see him, I could see him in Ring of Honor. I think that's where he would fit the best um, of, 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 of all the companies. Maybe Impact, those two. I, I, I don't see him, I don't see him in AEW. I saw him on, you know, the few times he worked on NXT television and he didn't stand out to me at that level. If you watch NXT every week, Ever Rise might have been a little bit of a head scratcher. Well, because they got some TV time, but they they treated them like jokes. Um, I mean, if you watch NXT TV, Breeze and Fandango just, they won their last match and they shot an angle with Imperium, you know, with the flag. I mean, they shot it like, an, you know, an, a real angle and they get cut. So that tells you also that this list of guys, they were not even thinking about this two weeks ago, that this is a new thing. And, um, you know, I mean, it's not like the bookers in charge at NXT knew about this because... I don't know that they they may have given. Mm, I don't know. I don't think they'd have given Everrise so much TV if they'd known this. And for sure, they wouldn't have had Fandango in that match. That's a hundred percent. So they, I'm sure that like they were just told, hey, you just got to. We want to make cuts, and we want you know the the thing with Everrise. They're both in their late thirties, and they're not. Are they go really? Any, yeah, I think uh, thirty, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that's the 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 prototype of who they're cutting. Late thirties, never going to be on the main roster, um, and they're just kind of there for some goofiness. Um, but they're not going to even be taken seriously in NXT. I mean, that's the prototype of the of, of you know what they were cutting. Uh, Fandango had been with WWE since two thousand and six. That is amazing. Yeah, most of it in developmental though. Um, I mean, he was in developmental for years, got the big push with Fandango at first, 
um, had that weird period where the Europeans loved him right after the WrestleMania. <laughs> and then he really, but he didn't really, the gimmick didn't really hit. And he had two major uh, um, surgeries, right at one right after the other, which pretty much killed his momentum. And when he came back, you know, they, they put him with Breeze. But, you know, it's funny because those guys, if you are guys... It, you know, like the argument is, well, they got they got TV time because they were entertaining. But when you're like that um, and you're putting that goofy stuff, it is not good for your longevity because you start being regarded as that. And then when they make cuts, it's like, well, nobody takes these guys seriously. So, you know, um, you know, and they were in NXT primarily, I mean, to to be veterans, to work with the younger guys and to be names from the main roster to help the ratings when going against AEW, which is no longer a factor. And they didn't really help the ratings that much anyway, because there was the feeling, oh, all we got to do is send guys that have been on real TV and then we'll beat them in those quarters. And um, and that's where they that's one of the reasons they were sent down. You know, one of the two reasons. And it didn't work out. You know, that didn't happen. They they were not like, oh, you know, it wasn't like on Wednesday night. People go like, oh, Fandango, they're bigger stars than, you know, the guys on AEW. So let's turn the channel and watch them. Because the, the feeling in WWE at the time that they were sent down and the same went with Balor and when they would send other people down is, is like, you know, like, oh, there's a bunch of people watching, but we have all the real stars and we got to put some real stars on NXT that have been on Raw or SmackDown and have had TV time, real TV time, and then we'll win those quarters. And, you know, that that didn't happen. And then uh, last three names here, Kurt Stallion, the Bollywood Boys and Arturo Huda. Who us? Who well, was close to 40? I mean, maybe he is 40. He was a, had an amateur background. And um, I know that he was viewed very highly. But again, like for, you know, he got brought in when they were looking for Brazilians and obviously, you know, like all of the, you know, if you look at like the guys from foreign countries, when they were earmarking countries, like they wanted, they wanted Brazilians. So they brought in a couple of guys, Benoni was another one. Ty Conti was another one um, for the Brazilian market. And then like now that's like not in vogue anymore for whatever reason, you know, it's not the market they're looking at. So, um, and you know they they bring these these guys in and then they don't they don't try to make any of them stars, uh, and but now you know now they're trying to make Chinese stars and and stuff. So, you know I mean but he you know him I think it was it was an age thing and they, he was never going to go anywhere. And then the Bollywood boys you know they're small guys they've been around for a long long time they're very good at what they do they were great with gender you know as far as being part of that act and you know whenever they're in tag matches and things like that the matches are good. Um, I could see them. Um, I could definitely see them in impact um, and hope that they get a spot there. Uh, that would probably, they would probably fit the best there. And uh, Kurt Stallion, independent guy, never got a chance. He got like the, you know, the famous three weeks. I think he got two actually. He got the <laughs> big build to do, uh, you know, cruiserweight title match, I think it was. Lost, never heard from again. Um, um, you know, I think that I think that he may have been one of those things where when they were just stockpiling guys and he was an evolved guy and, you know, they were they evolved and folded. So they wanted to pick a lot of those guys up. And I think that the deal probably with him, I'm going to guess the deal with him is that, that uh, they thought he was too thin and uh, didn't have the the physical look that they were looking for and they gave up on him and you know if they gave up on you now is not a good time uh to be in wwe when they've already given up on you as, and, and as far as a push so um you know that's he's not that you know i'm sure there's more to come do you know the status of them as far as no competes are concerned because you mentioned a I, bunch of folks for Im who, who impact could be interested in and they have the slime anniversary show which is all about creating interest in who could possibly show yeah, up they can't none of these people will be able to make slime anniversary um the nxt i i think the nxt is 30 days and then the ones with main contracts which might be breeze and fandango maybe the sings i'm not even sure those would be 90 so so um yeah um yeah so that would be that would be it so you mentioned uh nick khan sort of 
being behind them having to make decisions like this. Usually when this happens, you know, people are like, oh, Vince, Vince, you know, thanks to Vince and Vince is the, the one. Is this a Vince thing or is this a Nick Khan thing? The guys are probably, I mean, I don't know when, the you know, like who I would think. I would think the guys who got picked to go would be Levesque. Mm. I mean, that that's only the, I mean, no one's told me that, but to me, that's the logical thing is because it's like, His guys. we've got to cut a bunch of guys in NXT. Let's cut some of the older guys that we don't, we don't see as having potential, but Levesque would know who he wants to use and who he doesn't want to use. And, you know, because with Vince, Vince doesn't watch the show. He wouldn't know. And Nick Khan's <laughs> not a wrestling guy. So he, he, like, put it this way, did Nick Khan... I mean, it's at the end, it's a Nikon suggestion. Vince okays it. Um, and then the names, I can't imagine it being Vince or Nikon with the names because that's not their expertise. Neither of them, you know, be blind guys cutting, you know, making that decision. Um, so, I mean, as far as who to blame, it's Vince, okay? Because Vince would have okayed it. As far as the idea, it's Nikon. And as far as like, you know, you know, so that's... You know, it's 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 everyone. But at the end of the day, it's Vince's decision. Vince Vince wants the budget cut um, in, you know, different ways uh, for whatever reason, you know, which, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, making it more attractive to sell, um, you know, if that's, you know, what it is. I mean, because that fits. Um, whether it's to keep the share price up and he wants to sell more stock, that fits too. You know, because the way that that stuff is structured, he can still sell a lot, a lot, a lot of stock and retain controlling interest. Mm -hmm. if he if That's what he chooses as well. But, you know, cash out when the stock price is, is you know, I mean, I'm saying, you know, it, it could go higher. It's it's about where I would expect it to be now. It, it had that couple week period where it it was up, for, for, for fluky reasons and now it's pretty much back to normal where it should be and um, but you know I mean they want uh, you know there's going to be more expense running a lot more traveling and things like that even though like in some ways the production of the show costs are going down because the Thunderdome was more expensive but in other ways the you know with all the travel and and doing road shows and things like that it is a lot more expense and they want to keep the profits up. So, you know, that's it all fact. It's, it's all plays a factor. Paul Fontaine wanted me to ask you this question, which was, could you see WWE NXT go back to using non-contracted talent as enhancement level talent, both as a cost savings and to get a look at people similar to how AEW has been doing it? A little bit, but I think that most of the time they want to use this the show to, you know, like do angles and things like that. I mean, the on the occasion of, I mean, like you're in Texas, maybe do one or two Texas guys and have them lose in two minutes as bodies as opposed to. Well, I take that back. NXT is all is all in Orlando, so you can use Florida Florida indie guys. Yeah, you know. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.